The Chaser's War on Everything is rated M for a mature audience. It contains coarse language and sex references. Welcome to the wall for another week as we say goodbye to the football season for another year, Chris. Yes, and a uh, very big congratulations to the Geelong Cats and the Melbourne Storm for their Premiership victories over the weekend. Mm -hmm. And Craig, I always love the celebrations at a grand final, yeah? Mm. You know when the teams see how much expensive champagne they can waste? Oh, they go nuts with the stuff, don't oh, they? Oh, great waste. And uh, what I reckon, there's a very unfortunate copycat effect. Mm. Like, I was out to dinner on Saturday night and the, uh, the sommelier thought that was the proper way to serve a bottle of champagne at a restaurant meal. And I didn't know what had hit me. My poor date copped it everywhere and I was trying to impress that girl on the date. Yeah, you know what that is, though, though? That's what I call Australian, that behaviour. That should be part of the citizenship test, uh, Chris. Oh, yes. This, uh, this is that new test that started this week where <laughs> aspiring citizens have to pass a quiz now about Australian values and history. Yes, and I've seen some of the questions and it's pretty basic stuff. Uh, things like what date is Australia Day, what date is Anzac Day, what's a good date to chuck a sickie, you know? Typical <laughs> core Australian exactly. values. And uh, you need to answer 12 out of 20 questions correctly to become an Aussie a citizen. Standard. Oh yeah, we're setting the bar pretty high. And I've got a feeling though, because apparently most of the migrants that sat it this week passed, mm. but I've got a feeling Australians probably wouldn't pass that test. Yeah, I think you could be right, Chris. In what year did the European settlement of Australia start? 1902. I don't know if it was the 70s or 60s, I'm not sure. It was the 1960s, 1970s. They've been here for about 2,000 maybe years, yeah. Who was the first Prime Minister of Australia? Um, Whiplon, I think it would have been. Um, was it at Port Keating, was it? Which day of the year is Australia Day? February sometime. Isn't it February? What day? Mm. Um, uh, is it a Wednesday? What's the population of Australia? Oh, three billion, three million, I don't know. I have no idea, there's too many people to count. <laughs> oh, well, in Australian citizens, there wouldn't be many. It's all overpopulated by new Australians, so it's not really Australia, it's Europe, isn't it? Mm, you're welcome. Uh, they call us a clever country, don't they, Chris? They do. Um, having seen that, I reckon Rove should start up a new TV show. Uh, are you smarter than a migrant just off the boat? <laughs> That's what I love about this country too. We'll deport a highly qualified doctor like Mohammed Hanif, but someone like this, well, he gets to stay. Um, uh, is it a Wednesday? <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere this week, there was a uh, there was a story about Australia's rental crisis and just how difficult and competitive it's getting for renters to find a place to live now. Yeah, yeah there was one uh, flat on the weekend that 100 people turned up to wanting to rent. It's a really desperate market out there. It is, and uh, everyone's dropping their standards just to get a roof over their heads that they can actually afford. But how unfussy are they prepared to be? We put out the open for inspection sign on the weekend to see just how desperate renters have become. It's quite a big, sort of spacious house. If you come in here, uh, this is the room. Really? It is. It's not as bad as it looks. Huh, that's an interesting offer. So where would I put my stuff? Like, well, you got shelf space. Um, like clothes. There might be a. There's some towel hooks there. We use this as a bedroom too, and that is just come. That's just become free, so you can sleep in the laundry. And those are both like ninety-five bucks a week, right? Yep. Uh -huh. Give it a go. See, that's the hot water unit that keeps you fairly warm in winter and so forth. G'day, Al. Um, Hi. Hey, how you going? Sorry. <laughs> this doesn't happen that often. Like, he, he wouldn't do that if you were sleeping. <laughs> this is the room. This would be your bedroom. You could almost put a second bed in if you wanted to, if you wanted to have someone over or sublet. Oh, oh sorry, oh. yeah, no, it's a bit of a hazard. You've got to watch that. This one's for lease at the moment. For 90 bucks, very airy, unlike under the stairs. This one's got 
Some people say too much air. Rain's a bit of an issue, but you just sort of, we can put up some cardboard or just sleep with an umbrella. Uh, this bed's $120 a week. Like, you'd have to share the bed with yeah, the other. George and um, me and my girlfriend. So it's sort of four in the bed. I won't even consider that. No? To be honest, no. You know, I'm gonna make fuck my back up bad time. You would stay clean, though. If you would take an Asian or something, they would fit in, but mm. I can I can quickly just show you how I try to sleep. It would sort of look like this. It's not bad. It's sort of... Really? Tiny man. My back is shit already, so... Good luck with the, the search and yeah, yeah, just let us know if you want to yeah, we'll put your name down. I, I still consider it, though. Okay. Not this one, but... Mm. Yeah, yeah, maybe the shit of the laundry. Yeah. Great. That's better. When a man needs confidence, he needs stinks deodorant. <laughs> destroying unwanted odors and the ozone layer. Stinks deodorant for the ultimate protection against everything. Experience the stinks effect today. Now, Chaz, uh, regular viewers of this show will have noticed that we are slightly obsessed by Persian rug warehouses on this show. Uh, we love a good carpet clearance. We do. The thing about carpet Did clearance somebody is... somebody say carpet no, clearance? No, no, really. Come on. Come on. Thank Actually, you, go. Andrew. No, no, the character wore thin about a year ago, no, buddy. Really. Anyway, what we really like about rug warehouses is not him. It's their no. over-the-top marketing. You know, you're talking unbelievable big yeah. discounts. Closing down sales that seem to last no, forever. No, oh, come on, mate. No, 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 Attention yet, buddy. No, that's Go. right. Never to be repeated prices which are repeated week after week. <laughs> but, Chaz, it has come to my attention that there are some rug sellers out there who are letting the side down. Oh. They're selling rugs, but they're not using the cliched sales hype. That not on. is tantamount to heresy in the carpet world. Tell me about it, mate. They're way out of line, so I decided to do get things right and do it by the book by launching a crackdown. Yes, hello. G'day, uh, Julian from Rug Warehouse Inspections. Just noticed uh, your store. Yeah. You don't appear to have any signage up in this store. Well, the thing is that there's no sale. You're in the rug industry, sir. It's important that you do have a sale on at the moment. We've been in business since 1952. Yeah, that's right. How, and how long at that time have you been closing down? We've never, cl never closed down. You never, no, no, you don't close down, obviously, but, but you're we closing down. We have never had a close that closing really? down. Really? So. I'm not saying uh, like the other business put the high prices and then uh, reduce the price massively. Reduce. That's exactly right. Yeah. And, and they're complying with the industry standards. Why aren't you? It's kind of cheating the customer, so... We... People expect that, sir. I'm sorry, we have to order you to put this out there, sir. Over there, thank you. Closing down. That's good. Would you say this is a store where everything must go? Look, I'm, I'm just here to sell. Has the boss gone crazy here? You're the boss. Have you gone crazy, sir? No, man, I'm no. still I'm still all here. I'm still all intact. Never had, I don't know, moments of madness where you just reduced the prices drastically? No. no. I'm going to issue you with an order to close this store. Now, you don't have to close, obviously, oh. but you just need to be able to say that you are closing down. Oh. Okay. issue whatever you like. This is my business. Yep. I run it the way I like to run it. I, I don't mean to be rude, sir, but if you continue to do that, your industry is going to get a reputation for fair dealing. Have you ever appeared in an ad, sir? No. Never rolled yourself up in a carpet, jumped out of it, talking about the bargains? No. Why not? Why should, why should I do that? Because you're selling rugs. I'm issuing you with an order. No, you have the, to lie down. I'm lie the, down. No, Come on. I'm the boss here. No, I'm the boss now, all right? <laughs> OK. One more. Two more. Come on. Ready and go. Everything is massively reduced. That's much better. <laughs> Tomorrow night on 10, strap yourselves in for the world's most inconvenient interviews for all new, inappropriate and misjudged interview opportunities from the highs to the lows. What were they thinking? The world's most inconvenient interviews for 9.30 tomorrow on 10. 
was uh, I was reading the other day that in Israel they recently introduced the world's first kosher mobile phone, which uh, I'm sure came as a huge relief to all those Jews who have been forced to use non-kosher phones, uh, presumably made out of pork. Yes, well, apparently what, what makes this phone kosher is it doesn't have any features, right? Like it doesn't have the SMS, the internet access cameras, because they can potentially tempt Jews into sin. Mm, and uh, now the rabbinical authorities in Israel have just set up their own phone network where, uh, I swear we're not making this up, calls to kosher phones are much cheaper than calls to non-kosher phones. Yes, in fact, if we, if we have a look at the pricing plan, uh, kosher calls are roughly 20 cents a minute, calls to heathens are 23 cents a minute, <laughs> heaven help you if you want to call a Palestinian. And uh, I think it's great. It's great that Orthodox Jews now have their own phone network. It's about time. It is, and uh, as part of it, they even have their own 0055 phone chat lines, which are brilliant. Um, check out their ads. Hot rabbis are standing by now, waiting for your call. Hundreds of fun single rabbis who just love talking Hebrew. Call 1-800-JUICY and choose from our range of orthodox, ultra-orthodox and ultra-unorthodox. The Rabbi Phone Chat Line. It's like your own private synagogue waiting to happen. Now, given how many of Anna Curran's segues we've presented so far, you'd be forgiven for thinking that all Anna does is clunky segues. But, oh, no, 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 no. There is much more to Anna Curran than that. Is. She also does meaningless gibberish. <laughs> That's right. We now present the most confusing introduction to a report ever written. Lawyers don't laugh, at least not in public, when they're pursuing a little guy and the bill is being paid by a big corporation. There's much more of that right across Australia these days. Rowan Wen with the answer to what's in a name. <laughs> and that report was, of course, about starfish. And now we, we actually found out who scripted that surreal bit of nonsense. It turns out it was originally a Beatles outtake, done when the group was savagely off their tits. Lawyers don't laugh, at least not in public, when they're pursuing a little guy and the bill's being paid. By a big corporation, there's a lot more of that right across Australia these days. <laughs> what do you think of that, Yoko? <laughs> on to today's lesson now, when the cupboard's bare. Now, reporters are always on the lookout for an A-grade news story, but when you can't find them, you settle for a B-grade news story. And if you can't find them, then you get yourself a C-grade story. And if you can't find <laughs> yeah, them... The chase, okay, if just scroll could, down, I'll scroll just, down, scroll down. Um, if you get, can't even get to a Y-grade story, mm. then you get yourself a job on a current affair. Just wondering if I could ask you a couple of questions about the uh, amount of time you spent having a shower. They've barred us from bringing the dogs into the bingo. The man banned from a club buffet for showing too much of his belly. And they were so offended they banned you. Yes, either stay away or cover up. Well, uh, fair enough. You know, the belly story's a bit lame, but the story about the dogs banned from the bingo, that was huge news. That's true. There were massive protests in the street, weren't they? <laughs> what if you can't find a story at all? Easy. You dig up a zany conspiracy theorist. How did you feel when you, when you saw it and you thought, well, that's an endocast of an alien head? Well, at first I thought, I wonder what it is, and the Sunday dawn, me, gee, it looks like a, an alien, so-called. True, true. An alien with a rock for a head. Of course, crackpots come in all shapes and sizes, Andrew. They're not even all human. I mean, reporter Brady Halls was so desperate, he found himself a television-watching Shetland pony. <laughs> keep, an eye, keep an eye out for the end of this clip and you'll see just how disgusted Brady is at the quality of his own report. Oh, 
Oprah's on. In time for Didger's favourite oh, show. Another one? All right. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's right, Brady. Oh, oh dear. dear. I mean, look, the problem with running Brady Hall's level stories is that, you know, your viewers don't actually give us stuff about no, the content. But that's why you have to jazz up a harmless topic with just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit of danger. Tonight, we expose the seedy underbelly of black market jobs in the dangerous, cutthroat world of trolley collection. <laughs> It's true, you know. There, there is a seed the other belly. This morning, my trolley got collected by Al Capone. Al Capone? That's right, Al Capone. God, it hurts. You should have known. It's a black market, that trolley collection industry, yeah. you know. Apparently, it's a cutthroat world. A cutthroat world. Yeah, that's what right. they say. Well, we've learned the techniques for creating something out of nothing. And now let's watch Today Tonight put them in action. They filled up three, that's right, three entire reports about this woman. She's 21, mother of one, wants 10 more. Did you get that? They have found a single mother who wants to have 11 children. Sorry, she has 11 children? No, no, no. She wants to have 11 oh, children. she wants to have, she oh, wants so, to so have, have 11 children. So what we have here is a genuine non-story. That's right. And just how far did Today Tonight manage to hype this one up? Consultant ethicist Nick Tonti Filippini. This contravenes the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. That's right, no lesser authority than the United Nations could deal with this woman's hypothetical wish to have babies. It's a human rights disaster, Andrew. So we went straight to Amnesty International to see what the hell they were doing about it. We have an important human rights abuse to discuss. You're wasting time on Burma. What are you doing about the woman who wants 11 babies? How can you sleep at night while this woman so callously wants babies? And furthermore, this woman wants to have a million babies. That's true. Listen to her! We can only concentrate on what we see as the uh, fundamental human rights. Community. Forget about human rights. What about dog rights? What are you going to do about lean V's? Innocent dogs play bingo! Why don't you start a writing campaign about that? Lovely lady, oh yes, yes, take my life away on a holiday. Eight nights aboard our new luxury liner and you'll think you've died and gone to heaven. And chances are you probably will. p and Cruises for the final trip of a lifetime. Take my life away, please, p and A few weeks ago, I was actually up at Ulu Roo on a holiday, and it's absolutely beautiful up there, mm. I've got to say. Although they do make you pretty feel pretty guilty about climbing the rock. They do, yeah. No, I was up there a couple of years ago, and I decided not to climb, because mm. they've got all these signs up around the base of the rock urging you not to climb Ulu Roo because it has great significance to the local Indigenous people. Yeah, yeah. And, and most of the tourists actually respect that request. But it got me thinking, are there any other major landmarks in Australia that you could make tourists feel guilty about visiting? Oh, are you climbing the bridge today? Yes. Hello, we're from the local white population. It's a very sacred site, and we ask if you don't climb over the bridge. No, we're we already going to. Sorry. Got to. You're we're definitely not. going to? We were going to climb it today. We came down here especially because we're, 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 well, we're from England. And you were going to climb it? We, well, we... Had, had you been warned at all of the cultural significance of the bridge? No, not at all. It's a very culturally significant icon. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. It represents the, the bell curve of wealth in Sydney. Yeah. And, you know, it's just now being walked over. It's really a... Yeah, it's wrong, really, isn't it? It is wrong. It's a sacred site, people. It's 80 years of white history there. You're just treading on it. Have some respect for the local white elders. Would you be upset if we didn't do it? We've got to do it. Oh. You've got to do it, I mean... We've got to do it. Is, is there something... You came here uh, to do it. Yeah, but you can't. If it, if it actually has a significance, I didn't realise it was actually going to offend anybody. It brings together the, the harbour areas. Yes which are of great significance for us. It's often written about in our, in our local text uh, domain, it's called the real estate section. Are you considering climbing the bridge today? Climbing the bridge? Yeah, because we're asking people not to climb the bridge because it's very sacred yeah? to the white population of Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, it's tough. I understand you've got your, your, your daughter pushing you versus the cultural significance of the white population. 21st birthday today, Sydney, harbour, harbour climb. I really feel bad for doing this, but just, you know, this is the, these, the, these elders who are missing behind the building of the bridge. All right. Listen, I think we're respecting Sorry oh, about God. that. I'm sorry. 
All right, thanks. Thank you. Thanks anyway. See you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a very special musical guest right now uh, here to perform for us live. Please give it up for Mr. Tim Friedman from the Windlums. <laughs> I was drinking on King Street The Sando shuts at two Met a girl at the Marlboro At the courthouse too So we bought a book from Ghouls Ate a Thai pot tom Grabbed a nightcap at Kalito's Turned it all into a song But there's a problem After just one verse I'm out of Newtown references There's a thousand songs I've written And they are all about bloody Newtown Walk past the Newtown school Swam at the Newtown pool Caught a bus from Newtown And got off at Newtown I got a funeral on at four, but I can't go, it's in anymore. <laughs> There's no aphrodisiac like Newtown. Truth, beauty, and a Turkish kebab. <laughs> I've got this problem, I can't finish this song. I need one more Newtown reference. I'll just get out the street directory, I suppose. There's be something I haven't mentioned about Newtown. And uh, oh, oh, yes, a back street called Watkin Lane Way, and that rhymes with Newtown Railway Station. If you need uh, something fixed, then you've come to the right place as we dive under the bonnet for another week. And the first problem I see there, Jules, is John Laws. Ah, yes, the golden tonsils himself. More bronze than gold these days, really, judging by his ratings. But his bigger problem seems to be complying with the cash for comment disclosure rules. Yeah, yes, Laws, he's forced to own up every time he mentions one of his sponsors on air. And he usually does it with the ring of a cowbell. Toyota are major, major sponsors of ours, and we're delighted to be able to ring our little bell to alert you to the fact that they are. That's great radio. I can't see why his ratings are dropping. Yeah, but his standards are slipping, you know, Craig, because in a single broadcast, Lawsy made 20 favourable comments about Telstra without declaring them as one of his sponsors. What, what no cowbell? Not a cowbell to be heard. Oh, that's not like Lawsy. He normally loves the cowbell. I can only assume he must have lost it. So I took him a new one. <laughs> Problems don't stop there. Next up is Burma. And I'm glad we solved the Lawsy problem before solving Burma. We've got our priorities, priorities right here, priorities. I think. Burma, yeah. Burma's in absolute chaos at the moment. Mm. There's democracy fighters there getting beaten and killed, while the international community does stuff all. Yeah, and it's been amazing, though, to see those Buddhist monks in Burma turning out in support of political change. Quite inspiring stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it with people in skimpy dresses <laughs> and Kevin Rudd? They love him. They do, Craig. But uh, while the Burmese people aren't getting much international support, the Burmese military are getting some help from our very own federal police. That's right, the Australian Federal Police actually train the Burmese law enforcement officials. But do our cops have all the training equipment they need? You know, Mark, I just got this for the uh, Australian Federal Police training in Burma. <laughs> OK, sorry. Must already have it.
Sadly, once again, that is just about it for another week. Uh, any plans for the rest of the week, guys? Well, I was hoping to go raving, actually, because obviously I am such a raver. Clearly. But it, it's very hard to find a good rave venue these days. It is, because I think I read the, you know, the scene sort of dwindled a bit. The underground scene's dwindled since the police started cracking down on drugs and so forth. Yeah, no, it's not 1998 anymore, but luckily there are still a few venues pumping out hardcore techno house. And believe it or not, most of them are retail stores. Really? Retail stores? Yeah, it's right? true. Basically, you go into any store these days, especially clothing ones, and they're blaring out loud techno beats. So, what better place for you and your dance mates to throw your next rave? <laughs> Let's get Monte! Just a reminder, you can catch Fat Boy Slim playing live at Supre this New Year's Eve. <laughs> Check out the tour dates on your screen there now. And remember, you can podcast the show by going to abc.net.au slash chaser. Thanks for watching us. Until next week, good night. Good night. <laughs>don't go away it's time for school with our great new comedy summer heights high coming up next 